book Seven Tenths of a Second, The Conspiracy, claims to prove that a conspiracy killed President Kennedy 50 years ago. The book shows that the shots were fired in a manner very different than what you have seen before. This video will only address the last three shots. The gunshots you hear, of course, were artificially generated. I will stop the Zepp Reuter film in various places to let Governor Conley explain what he was doing during the shooting at those times. Th thinking that the shot had come from back over my right shoulder, and I turned to look in that direction, uh, I think motivated by two things. First, to see if I could see where the shot came from, see if I could see anything unusual. But equally, or more important to me at that moment in my thought processes, was a desire to see him, see if anything had happened. So I turned, and I obviously saw nothing but a, a tremendous crowd of people from, wh from where we had just come. And I saw nothing unusual, nothing out of the way, except people also had startled looks on their faces. They were turning, they were looking. Uh, John Conley has completed his turn to the right and is now starting to turn back to look toward his left. So I was in the process of turning to my left to look back over my left shoulder uh, to see if I could see him in the back seat. And that's when I felt... Uh, After hearing a shot, John Connolly turned to his right to see if he could see anything. He says he quickly looked, but didn't see anything out of the ordinary, except the crowd reacting to the noise they heard. John Connolly then says he starts to turn back toward his left to look over his left shoulder, and that's when he felt... So, I was in the process of turning to my left, to look back over my left shoulder, uh, to see if I could see him in the back seat. And that's when I felt uh, the impact of the bullet that hit me. Uh, there, was no, there was no great pain uh, uh, associated with the, the bullet that hit me, notwithstanding it went in my back shoulder and came out my chest right here. I felt as if someone had just hit me in the back, a sharp blow, with a doubled up fist. It was an impact rather than any, any sort of a, of a searing pain. It, it most knocked me over uh, at least enough to where I looked down and, of course, I was, I was covered with blood and frankly thought that I had uh, uh, been fatally hit. A shot after the sign and then bang, bang. John Connolly has been over a split second after President Kennedy is shot in the head. For that to be true, the last two shots had to be fired a split second apart. The shot that hit President Kennedy in the head looks like it was fired from the right front, and the last shot, fired a split second later, looks like it was fired from behind and hit Connolly in the back. There are many witnesses who heard the last two shots fired a split second apart. Bang, bang. First shot, and th there was a pause, and then there was bam, bam. Sam Kenney drove the Secret Service car immediately behind the presidential limousine. Oh, the president grabbed his neck, and then by that time, there was, there was two falling shots, just like a pow, pow. There were three shots, and these were spaced... Uh, with one shot, then a pause, and then two shots in very close order, such as perhaps uh, almost on top of each other while there was... As James Tagg came forward. And then I heard the crack, crack of two rifle shots. You've probably seen some of these witnesses and others and have ignored what they said about the last two shots being fired very close together. The United States government and the press have been telling you for decades those were echoes, not two separate shots. Now let's prove the witnesses were right and the press and the government were wrong. 
John Conley's first reaction is generally accepted as Zapruder frame 224. President Kennedy's headshot is, of course, frame 313. We can calculate the time between those two shots and by subtracting the frame numbers from each other and dividing by the film speed, we can calculate that to be 4.8 seconds between those two shots. Conley made an extremely rapid movement forward a split second after President Kennedy was shot in the head. The book looks at various frames and determines that frame number is frame 325. Performing a calculation as before, we determine the last two shots using the Zapruder film with seven tenths of a second apart. There are two different ways to determine the time between the shots. We can use the Zapruder film or the audio evidence. This figure is a screen capture off of a documentary that shows the time between shots from the latest analysis of the Dallas Police Radio recording. Looking at the last three shots, we see the time between those two three shots is 4.8 seconds and 7 tenths of a second. This is the same time as we calculated from the Zapruder film. It would leave any reasonable person to believe that the acoustical evidence recording of the Dallas Police Radio Channel did capture the sounds of the shots. But you shouldn't just believe me. You should immediately ask if it is so simple to prove conspiracy, why has nobody else shown this match between the audio evidence and the Zepruder film before? I would answer that question by saying there are several roadblocks that have hidden the facts that you have just seen. I'll go over just one of them, but there are more talked about in my book. The House Select Committee of Assassination audio experts who reviewed the Dallas police recordings said that statistically there was a strong probability that one of the shots was fired from the right front. The probability of 95% or better, there was indeed a shot fired from the grassy knoll. The audio experts used a technique called echocorrelation analysis. And with that, they correlated data from the actual recording with test shot fired recordings and determined that the first shot of the bang bang was the Wyland was the one that was fired from the grassy knoll. Now watch how the House Select Committee of Assassination matched the audio recording to the separator film. On the final day of the committee hearings, the acoustic experts showed this version of the Zapruder film. Using their findings, they added sound. You just saw one of the biggest lies in history, and you probably didn't even notice it. This time in extreme slow motion. The House Select Committee of Assassination on the final day of the hearings showed the shot fired from the grassy knoll was fired before the President Kennedy had shot. And then the last shot, the one fired from the Texas School Book Depository, was the one that hit President Kennedy in the head, just like the autopsy evidence showed. Anyone with an ounce of sense that had seen the Zapruder film would show the shot that hit President Kennedy head was the one fired from the front. But the House Select Committee of Assassination showed the shot that was fired from the front was fired before President Kennedy was shot in the head, and the last one, fired from behind, is the one that hit Kennedy. 
by misaligning the last two shots. They hid the fact that the last shot was actually fired when Conley was bent over, and they also hid the fact that the shot that was fired from the front was the one that hit Kennedy in the head. But the most important thing that was hidden was the fact that the audio evidence analysis aligned with the Zepruder film, which proves the United States government forged evidence and lied to hide the truth. The magnitude of the lies told by the United States government to hide the truth are much bigger than anyone would normally ever believe. You cannot understand American history for the last five decades until you understand and comprehend how the United States government hid the identity of people behind the Kennedy assassination lies.